Hi, I'm Dr. Andrew Kerr, and I'm the manager of the Dale Etheridge Planetarium at the College of Southern Nevada on the North Las Vegas campus. Welcome to the July 21st installment of the Las Vegas Weekly Night Sky. In these videos, we want to let you know what you can go outside and look for in the nighttime sky. Let's start in the northern sky this week at sunset. The stars in the north that never set are referred to as circumpolar stars. As Polaris stays pretty close to one spot in the sky, the other stars in the north appear to revolve around it, almost like the hands of a clock, albeit backwards. Low on the horizon right now are one popular constellation and one little-known constellation. Cassiopeia is sometimes referred to as a crown, sometimes as a throne, but it always looks like a squashed W. Right now at sunset, the W is in its correct orientation, but very low to the horizon, so it'll be hard for most to see. The other constellation that is low right now is Camelopardalis the Giraffe. This is a young constellation created fairly recently, still over a hundred years ago, to fill a section of the sky that did not have a well-defined connect-the-dots pattern. The most interesting part of this constellation is its name. Camelopardalis is the scientific name for a giraffe because long ago early biologists thought that the giraffe was a cross between a camel and a leopard. Pretty wild stuff. The stars are faint and not easy to find even when high in the sky, but Cassiopeia's five bright stars are easy to see even with the lights of Las Vegas. Mercury is pretty well gone from the west now, but Mars is hanging in there getting lower in the early evening. Mars is between Leo and Virgo this week. Leo and Virgo are of course two signs of the zodiac, the group of constellations that lie along the ecliptic, the path that the sun takes through our sky over the course of the year. The best constellations in the south and southeast remain Scorpius and Sagittarius. Using binoculars to view the sky between the two constellations will reveal a myriad of starry delights. If you have a pair of binoculars, give it a try some clear night. You'll be amazed at how much more you can see. The summer triangle is rising higher and higher in the east after sunset. There are lots of additional small constellations in that area of the sky. Many of them are made up of just a few stars, but are faint and not very easy to see, especially in the light pollution of Las Vegas. Saturn rises at 11 p.m. to start the week, and by midnight should be easy to pick out against the background of stars. Saturn tends to appear with a faint yellowish tint in the sky. The Moon and Venus will rise at about 3 a.m. to start the week, and Venus will remain easy to pick out as the morning star for quite a while to come. Jupiter rises just before dawn, and the thin waning crescent moon will be to the left of Jupiter on the morning of the 23rd. The thin waxing crescent moon will be not far from Mars on the evening of the 27th over in the west. Join us again next Monday for some new weekly sky highlights. I look forward to seeing you in the planetarium.